It's with great pleasure to present to you the world's first standalone performance workstation, the Akai Force. Between the 64 velocity sensitive pads, intuitive touch interface, integrated synth engines, and literally hundreds of ways of playing melody and harmony, Force offers all of the tools and workflows that make performing music simpler than ever. My name is Nick Trakakis, and I'm gonna be walking you through this product. We're gonna start with a hardware overview, but then we'll dive in deeper to some of the key features that make Force special. So let's get right into it. The first thing you'll notice is the beautiful color multi-touch display. This not only looks great, but it gives you amazing ways of working with audio and MIDI. Editing is so easy and it's actually a lot of fun as well. The interaction between this screen and the pads is essential to the workflow, so I'll get into that in a little bit. On the left-hand side, you have essential controls like master volume, main menu, your transport, and key views. On the right-hand side, you have a clickable endless encoder, which we call the data dial, which offers a tactile alternative to the touchscreen, and the buttons below that do the same, but in button form. Then you have a crossfader with assignment buttons left and right. In the middle, you have eight assignable Q-Link controls with data displays above them. These knobs are capacitive and they serve a variety of different master mixer functions and you can assign pretty much any parameter from any track to any knob. So there's a lot of versatility there. Below that, we have 64 velocity sensitive pads in an eight x eight grid. These pads function on three primary modes. Launch for launching clips and scenes, notes for playing melody, harmony, and drums, and step sequence, which turns the pads into a step sequencer. Below that, I have four quick edit buttons. This is for editing my pads, edit, select, copy, delete. I have an arpeggiator, which is super deep, and I'll show you in a little bit. A dedicated tap tempo. And then these four buttons right here change the behavior of the bottom row of the pads. So I have mute, solo, which also doubles as a cue, record arm, clip stop. Above that, I have my track select buttons, and you'll see text below each of these. That is the shift function. So if I hold down shift and press the first pad, it'll quantize. I can change octaves up and down. So it makes it really easy to navigate around and uh, it's intuitive workflow. Now that we went over the hardware, let's take a closer look at the touch interface, starting with the browser. The browser is split up into six key categories. You have audio and MIDI clips, which can be loaded into cells in launch mode. You have four integrated synth engines that can be controlled with the Q-Link controls and the pads. You have a 10 gig library of samples and drum kits, and this thing just keeps on going. It covers all of the contemporary styles of music, but uh, I have to say uh, you can make pretty much any genre with the sounds that come with the hardware itself. A sample library as well as projects. Next, you have a conveniently placed save button, which is essential. If you hold down shift and save, you can quickly save your project. But if you press the save button, you have a number of different save options. You can save the track. You can save the individual sample that you're playing on. Uh, you can save the track with all of the plugins and effects that you have on it. So again, just really convenient right there on the product. Next, we have matrix mode, which gives you an overview of your entire project with an eight by eight view of your clips. In this mode, you can select tracks, see key track information like the name, the type of track it is, which side of the crossfader it's on, whether it's muted or soloed. All of that can be done right here from the matrix. And I can work on the pads independently from this view. So if I wanted to say record a clip or launch a clip, I can do so without changing the behavior of the pads, which is really convenient. I can also see the tempo of my song, the key of it, and launch and clips and scenes from this view as well. Next, we have clip view, which gives you a more detailed view of your clip. There's three different types. You have one for drums, you have one for melody and harmony with a piano roll, and you have one for audio. Let's check out the drums. So this is a drum clip. I can even go in and edit with the touch screen. And this is something that I just absolutely love. I've fallen in love with this product because I can do things like this. Delete, gone, undo, it's back. A lot of fun. I can also edit audio really easily. So let's take this. And let's just reverse maybe the end of it and see how that sounds. How cool is that? Super simple, 
took like two steps and that we got a really cool sample. Next is our mixer view, which gives you key mixer parameters like volume, sends, pans, and inserts. It also allows you to switch tracks and shows the relevant track information. I can turn on automation here. I can mute solo, assign to the crossfader. I can assign sends. And you also have the air effects collection in here, which gives you studio quality effects right here on the unit. Moving on, we have our navigate button, which again gives you an overview of your project, but this time you can touch the screen to move to a different section. I can also use the cursor buttons to move one row or column at a time, or if I hold down shift, I can move eight rows or columns at a time, or to the beginning of the end of my project, depending on how big it is. Next, we have eight assignable Q-Link controls, which serve a bunch of different functions depending on what you want them to do. Let me show you some of the features. Holding down knobs will bring up this menu where you can choose between mixer controls like volume pan and sends one through four. You'll see that the sends are now on the data display and I can adjust that for the track. You can also set it to screen, which maps out every parameter depending on if you're on a synthesizer. Let me show you. So here I'm on hype synth and as I go through the different screens, the knobs will map to whatever is on the screen. Very convenient. You also have the track level where we've went ahead and mapped 16 parameters that really make the synth shine. Uh, that said, you can change these if you want by hitting shift and knobs. And then you can change any parameter. Say if you're left-handed, you can move the cutoff to the other side. Depends on what you want to do. And then on the master project level, this is where you can assign things like filters or sends from any track or send or insert to these two pages. Uh, when I'm creating a performance, this is the last thing that I do in order to really express the instruments and make things a little bit more interesting. Below the Q-Links, you have your 64 velocity sensitive pads. This is the heart of force. And the first mode that they function in is launch mode. Each column represents a track. I like to think of a track kind of like a band member. So on the first track, I have my drummer. If I press a pad, It'll launch that clip, and if I go to my matrix view, you can see relatively the length of the clip as it plays. So I have a shorter clip on track two. If I want to launch an entire scene, I can do so. The rows represent different sections of the song, so you can find creative ways to arrange in launch mode. Next is notes mode. Between the scales and chords, there's literally hundreds of different ways of setting up the pads to play melody and harmony. All right, let's take a look at some of the different modes. By holding down note, a menu will pop up on Force's screen, illustrating the different modes that you can choose from. And there's nine of them, everything from chromatic to progressions to piano to tonnets. By holding down shift and note, I can open up the note configuration menu. And here you can choose your mode type, the scale, where your pad rows and how they're going to be set up, the octave, the root note, all of that interesting stuff. So let's take a look at the chromatic scale with the pad rows and start on root in the natural minor. And you can do amazing things like super easy. And the fact that I was able to kind of develop these chops so quickly uh, really illustrate how easy it is to use this as an instrument. Let's take a look at some of the different types. So first I'm going to change the different pad rows. So the one that's probably most common on a 64 pad matrix is start on fourth. And that means that it's kind of like a guitar. The fourth interval is going to be on the next pad row. So that's what it means when I say pad rows. But look at all the different ways you can set this up. You can have it on continuous. I'm actually going to change to scales. And I'm on the natural minor scale. The octave of the scale is going to be on the pads. And then every note in between. And when it says continuous, that means it's going to be the root and then every single note and then it's going to continuously run up on the pad scales like that. Or I could do start on root, which is my favorite. This allows you to do things that you can't do on any other instrument, at least that I've played. All right, so I have it set on polyphonic now. The root note is here, the octave is on top, and then I have every note within the scale and then they're stacked by octave. much fun to play with this. It's almost a spiritual experience 
playing with this because I don't play the piano. So having an instrument to where everything sounds in key allows me to get inspired in ways that are completely unique to this setup. Next, let's talk about chords. There's a few different ways you can create chords on force. Let me show you a few of them. Starting with harmonize. I'm on the blue scale and I have a one, three, five interval. So it'll play the first, the third, and the fifth interval on that scale. But if I change to say the major scale, it'll give me a triad or a triad and minor scale. So depending on which scale you are, the harmonization will sound different. You also have you also have chords, so you can choose between a bunch of different chords. And say I have an A as my root note, it'll play an A major seven. Or if I have a, a C right here, it'll play a C major seven. Just depends on which note you have and it'll play the chord that's listed there. Then you have progressions. Now this is probably the coolest feature that I've played with because there's so many progressions in here that just about every chord that you need is gonna be on force to begin with. And if you need to add a different voicing, that's really simple as well. Let me show you all of them. If I click here, I was on dance 17, but let's go to the top. You have ballads, you have dance, gospel, jazz, and pop. And there's a lot of them and they all sound really good. A real convenient feature of scrolling through the progressions is that it tells you the scale that that progression is on. So if you created a song in the minor scale, you can easily go through and find a progression that works. Just take a look right here. So gospel two is on the major scale and then I have something on the natural minor. So it's really conveniently placed so you can find a scale and a progression that work well together. Let's listen to a few different progressions. Or maybe try something jazzy. I don't know. Let's take a look. Super sweet. Very easy. Editing clips is also really easy. If I go back into clip mode, and here I can adjust the size of the clip. Right, I have a really long 32 bar clips for my vocal acapella. But if I only wanted a section of that to loop, I can do so right in here. And in my region menu, I also can time stretch this with the time stretching algorithm that comes with Force. This allows me to change the tempo of the song without adjusting the pitch of the vocals or vice versa, changing the pitch of the vocal without affecting the tempo of the song. Let me demonstrate. First, let's solo the clip containing the vocal loop. That's on track six. And then let's launch the clip. And then holding down tap tempo and spinning the data dial will change your tempo. Speeding it down. Now I'm feeling the space surrounding my heart. No changes to the pitch? Perfect. Next I'll demonstrate using notes mode with drums. And again, we have an eight by eight matrix that we can populate. So the lower left quadrant is what you're used to with an MPC. You have your four by four, kick snare, open hi-hat, all of the typical layouts that you'd be accustomed to, except you're not contained to this quadrant. What I've done here is I took this bass sample and I laid it out on the top right here, all different pitches. So I can do cool bass lines. Super simple. To do that, I use the quick edit buttons. I can silently select. If I was on a different screen like clip and I wanted to edit a pad, I would just hold down edit and then press whatever pad and then it would show up in the edit menu. I can copy, which is what I did over here. Let's so say I want to take that, lay it out, and then I can adjust the pitch of each individual sample on every pad. I can also add effects to the individual pads. And if I hold down shift and mixer, it opens up the pad mixer, which allows me to do all of the same things I do on the channel mixer, except on the individual pad level. So it's super powerful 
and really offers more than enough options for playing drums on this matrix. Next, we have step sequence. In this mode, I'll demonstrate it with the drums, starting with this bass here. pads are super responsive. It's really easy to add steps, take them out, and it's a lot of fun to play around with, so have at it. Because I extended the length to get to those other sections, it's simple. Just hold down step sequence, and now on the pads, you can choose bars 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, and 7 and 8. In addition to creating drum sequences, you can also use the step sequencer to create melodies and harmonies, and there's a lanes mode. Let me show you the other ones. Holding down step sequence, you have melodic, which you can pick a note and add in steps. Or if you go over to lanes, each of the rows represents a different drum or note in your piano roll. And then you simply put in the steps and the sequence will play from left to right. Force is also equipped with an extremely powerful onboard arpeggiator. If you hold down shift and press ARP, you can see the configuration menu. It's split into four different actions. You have a traditional ARP where you can choose up and down variations, the amount of octaves. You have the classic Akai note repeat, a bunch of different rhythms, and dozens of patterns. A pattern is a great way to get inspired if you're starting a song from scratch. As you can see, if I scroll down, there's literally dozens of them that range a bunch of different genres. So have fun with this because these things are very inspiring. Next, let's cover Force's main menu, which houses features that don't have a dedicated button. For example, your sample edit, where you can chop up samples and loop them. It also features a sampler, which has the same auto sample feature that is included in MPC 2.3. And lastly, you have a looper. The looper allows you to record and overdub in real time to add really interesting effects to your mix. This is great for guitarists, vocalists, beatboxers, anyone who utilizes a loop in their music. Force also has an XY pad that takes advantage of the multi-touch interface. We can control things like delays and filters, or even our latest preset, Tape Stop. <music> Lastly, you have your preferences where you can change things like your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as making changes to the sensitivity of your pads. And the great thing about having Wi-Fi on board is we can take advantage of protocols like Ableton Link. That concludes our overview of Force. Thanks for watching.